From yarn society and today we're going to crochet some bunny ears together these make a super cute teether great for a baby shower gift or an easter present or you can turn these ears into a decoration by simply swapping the teether ring for an embroidery hoop we're going to get started by going through the supplies for this pattern i used a cotton dk yarn this one is by We Are Knitters and it's called The Cotton. If you're making a teether, I would recommend a cotton yarn or even better, an organic cotton that washes easily. If you're making a decoration, feel free to use what you have on hand and you can also use worsted weight yarn as it works up great as well. We'll also be using a D 3.25 millimeter hook, a yarn needle, some scissors, stitch markers, and then if you are making the teether, this is a three inch organic finished wooden teether and I will link all this in the description box below. And if you're making a decoration, this is a three and a half inch embroidery hoop. Okay guys, we're gonna get started by making six single crochet into a magic circle. You can either use your favorite way of making a magic circle, or I can show you my slip knot magic circle. So in order to make this, we're gonna leave a long tail we're going to wrap the yarn around two fingers, holding the tail with our ring finger, and then we're going to push the back piece to the front. So now I'm going to pull up on that yarn. This is going to make a slip knot and I can adjust the tail as I need to. I'm going to get set up with my yarn and then I'm going to place that loop in my middle finger. I'm going to hold the tail with my ring finger and then I'm going to insert my hook into that loop. I'm going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through and that just makes a chain to connect to my loop. Now I'm going to make a single crochet by inserting my hook into the loop, yarning over, pulling through. I have two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through. That's single crochet one. Put your hook back into the loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through again. That's single crochet two. So continue single crocheting. This is number three, number four, number five, and this is our last single crochet. So now that we have six single crochet, I'm going to take out my tail and close up my magic circle. Here we're just going to count our V's. Each stitch looks like a V. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then this little bit right here is just that chain stitch that we worked in the beginning. I'm gonna grab a stitch marker. And me personally, I place a stitch marker on my last stitch of the round. If you place it on the first stitch, feel free to do whatever works for you. Moving on to round two, we're gonna make an increase in each stitch. So we're gonna do two single crochet in each stitch around. So here is single crochet one, and then we'll make our second single crochet into that same stitch. And then we're gonna do the same thing all the way around. So this is our second increase. We'll put our second single crochet in the same stitch. And then we'll do an increase number three increase four increase five and then we'll do our last increase here so i'm going to change my stitch marker to the last stitch of the round and then I'm gonna tighten up my magic circle. You usually have to tighten it up for the first few rounds and then it'll stay closed. So for round three, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, and we're gonna do this six times around. So we're gonna increase here, our second single crochet in the same stitch, and then we're gonna make one single crochet in that next stitch. And we're just gonna repeat this, increase, in the next stitch 
and then make one single crochet in the next. So this is increase number three. Then we'll do a single crochet, increase four, single crochet, increase five, single crochet, and then increase six. It's our last increase and then make your last single crochet in the stitch with your stitch marker. So I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna close it up, it looks pretty close, but I'm gonna close it one more time. And then moving on to round four, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two. And we'll also do this six times around. So this is increase one. We'll single crochet in the next stitch and then do another single crochet in that next stitch. Then we'll increase two, single crochet, move over and make another single crochet, increase three, single crochet, single crochet two, and then we'll increase four, and then make our two single crochet, increase five, then make a single crochet, and another one, and then our increase number six. So our last increase and then finish off with your last single crochet. For round five and six, we are going to single crochet in the next 24 stitches. So you wanna make sure that you count your stitches so you don't have to rip those stitches out or frog them. That word cracks me up. After a year of crocheting, um, I discovered Ravelry and people kept talking about frogging and I had no idea what they were talking about. I think I, I'm, I'm sure I had to Google it because I had no clue. Um, I think I thought it was like a stitch, like a certain stitch or something. Um, so it took me like quite a while to even know what that word meant. Also when I heard people saying whip, <laughs> I also had to look that up because I had no idea what it was. There's so much yarn lingo that I still don't know. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any crochet terms that like totally threw you off because I'd love to know. Okay, so we're at the end of round five. I'm just gonna change my stitch marker to the last stitch of the round. And then we're gonna work on round six. So continue going all the way around with single crochets and we will meet back at the end of round six. Okay, so I'm reaching the end of round six here. I'm just finishing up and then I'm gonna change my stitch marker to the last stitch of the round. And now for round seven, we're gonna make one decrease, single crochet in the next two stitches. We're gonna do this six times around. If you don't know how to do an invisible decrease, I'll put my video up here and you can also look in the description box below. To make an invisible decrease, you'll wanna put your hook underneath the front loop of the first stitch and then directly under the front loop of the second stitch. You're gonna yarn over and pull through and then you're gonna yarn over and pull through the two loops on the hook. And that would be your first invisible decrease. Now we're gonna single crochet in each of the next two stitches. So here's one, moving over a stitch, two, and now we're gonna make another decrease. We're gonna go underneath the front loop, go underneath the front loop again, yarn over, pull through. You have two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through. To continue, we're gonna do a single crochet in the next two stitches. So here's our second single crochet. And then we're gonna do another decrease under the front loop, under the front loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through. So do a single crochet and then another, 
I'm just going to grab some yarn here and then continue on doing another decrease and a single crochet in the next two stitches. Here is our fifth decrease. Add two single crochet. And then this is our sixth decrease. We'll end with a single crochet in the last two stitches. Okay, so I'm going to change my stitch marker. And for round eight, we're just going to single crochet in the next 18 stitches. So you'll just want to count and make sure you have 18. And just single crochet all the way around. If you get a chance to crochet with this yarn, it is super soft. It does do a little bit of splitting, but I think if I had a bigger hook, it would be fine because this yarn would be awesome for like a summer tank or some, some kind of wearable. Um, I actually tried to make a tank last year by Two of Wands. It was so pretty. Uh, I got the gauge right and everything, but it still turned out huge. I frogged it our new word of the day <laughs> and I did it once again and I couldn't believe it it was still too big so I think I have to stick with amigurumi okay guys I'm reaching the end here here's my last stitch and then I'm gonna change my stitch marker and for round nine we're gonna do one decrease single crochet in the next stitch and we are going to do this six times around. So here's a decrease and then a single crochet. So here's decrease one, single crochet one, and then decrease two, single crochet one, decrease three, single crochet, decrease four, single crochet, decrease five, single crochet, and then our last decrease in single crochet. I'm just going to change my stitch marker and then for round 10, I'm going to single crochet in the next 12 stitches. Okay, I'm reaching the end of round 10. I'll change my stitch marker and then for round 11 we're going to do one decrease single crochet in each of the next two stitches and we're going to be doing that three times around. So here we'll do a decrease and then a single crochet in the next two. Our first decrease single crochet one comes flying out and two and then I'll let you decrease single crochet in the next two
Okay, we're at the end of the round. I'm changing my stitch marker. Now from round 12 through 46, we're gonna single crochet all the way around in the next nine stitches. So definitely make sure you have nine stitches and then put on your favorite show and just single crochet your heart out. Before I let you guys go, I just wanna show you how I mark round 12 so I can count from there and I don't have to start from the beginning. I'm gonna do the whole round 12. Here I'm just single crocheting and once I get about one or two stitches in, I'm just gonna take another stitch marker and I'm gonna mark round 12, the beginning of round 12, so that when I continue crocheting, I can use that stitch marker to know where I am so I don't have to count from the beginning each time. So here, I'll show you. We're gonna finish round 12. Okay, I'm on the last stitch. I'm gonna change my stitch marker. I'm just gonna do a few stitches around 13 so you can really see. This is really helpful too, so you don't have to just keep counting. Okay, so now you can see here pretty clear when you're counting that this is round 12, and then this one will be round 13, and you just continue on until you get to round, finish round 46, and then we will meet back. Okay, we're back. We just finished round 46 with Movie Magic. What show did you guys watch <laughs> during all this? Okay, so moving on to round 47, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two. So we're going to do an increase, then single crochet in the next two. And we are going to do this three times around. So increase one, single crochet one, single crochet two. And here is our second decrease, I mean increase, I'm sorry. Single crochet one, single crochet two. And then our last increase here and then we'll single crochet in the next two. Go ahead and change your stitch marker. For round 48, we are just gonna single crochet in the next 12 stitches. Okay, you can change your stitch marker. In round 49, we are gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next, and we'll be doing this six times around. So here's increase one, single crochet one, increase two, single crochet one, increase Three, it's our third time. Single crochet. Here's our fourth increase. Single crochet. Our fifth. Single crochet. And then you can end with your last increase and single crochet. Okay, we can change our stitch marker. For round 50, we're gonna single crochet in the next 18 stitches. You might just wanna count to make sure you have 18 each time we do a single crochet round to count your stitches. And then just single crochet all the way around.
Okay, we're finishing up this round. And then we're gonna change our stitch marker. And then for round 51, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two stitches. We'll be doing this six times around. So we have increase one, single crochet one, single crochet two, and then we'll do our second increase, single crochet one and two. And then I will let you all increase and in single crochet two until you reach the end. Okay, I'm reaching the end of the round. We can change our stitch marker. For round 52 and 53, we're gonna single crochet in the next 24 stitches. You can continue crocheting around for the next two rounds and then we'll meet back. Moving on to round 54, we are going to make one decrease and then we're gonna single crochet in the next two stitches. So we will make our first decrease and then we'll single crochet one, single crochet two. Here is our second decrease. Single crochet one and two. Here is our third decrease. Single crochet one and two. Our fourth decrease, single crochet one and two. Here is our fifth decrease, one and two. And then our last decrease here, and you can finish off with your single crochet. Okay, you can change your stitch marker. For round 55, we are gonna do one decrease, single crochet in the next stitch. So just make one decrease and then one single crochet, continue that around for six times. Okay, we're making our last decrease and our last single crochet. Then we're gonna change our stitch marker. And for round 56, it's our last round. We are gonna make six decreases. We are going to make our first decrease. It's a little tricky at this point, but we can do it. This is our second decrease. I had to adjust with every decrease here. Okay, this is our third. Since we have no stuffing, it seems tricky when you have stuffing and tricky when you don't have stuffing. Okay, and then we will make another decrease. I'm really struggling on this last round here. But we are almost done. Okay, so the last decrease. From here, we're gonna leave a long tail. Grab your scissors and just cut off that tail. 
And now we want to close this piece shut. So we're going to fasten off. We're going to yarn over and pull the yarn all the way through. And from here, I'm going to take out my stitch marker and then I'm going to grab my yarn needle and thread that long tail into my yarn needle. Okay, we want to close this piece. So I'm going to count my stitches. I should have six, six stitches left. And I like to count backwards so I can really see my V stitches. So here is one, two, three, four, five, and six looks a little bit hidden, but it's back here. What we're going to do is we're going to place our yarn needle in between the stitch, right behind the front loop. And then I'm going to pull my needle all the way down. And then I like to turn the piece so the stitch is in front of me. And then I'm going to place my yarn needle behind that front loop once again, pull down and just continue this around. So this is our third stitch. Here is our fourth. Fifth. And our last stitch is here. That's our little fasten off bit. And this is our last stitch. So once you get this, you want to close it up, but you want to keep your eye on the hole as you're closing. So you can close really slow and then watch that hole as you're closing because you want to place that yarn needle back through that hole. So here's my hole here. I'm going to put the needle through the hole and I'm just going to weave kind of close just so I can close this up. So you want to pull really tight and then you're just going to bunch that section back up. So it looks like the other side in essence. It doesn't look exactly the same, but from the eye, you really can't tell much of a difference. Okay, from here, we want to weave in that long piece of yarn. We don't have any stuffing to really grab that yarn. So I like to weave it in almost to the other side, just so I know it'll stay in place. You could also make a little knot if you wanted. Um, and then weave it in that way as well. But this time I didn't do that. I just weaved it all the way to the other side. Once you weave in your yarn, go ahead and cut off the excess and then we'll move on to assembly. Okay, moving on to assembly, you'll want to lay your piece flat and don't worry about the how your ears are being flipped because once you place it on the teether or the embroidery hoop you can move your ears as you need to so from here go ahead and grab your teether and what you're going to do is you're going to place the teether on the table and you're going to place your ears over the teether i like to place it in the middle you're going to flip one of the ears behind the hoop and bring it to the front and then you're going to flip the other ear from back to front through the loop again. And then I like to hold on to the ears and kind of shimmy that middle piece all the way up. And that piece surprisingly keeps the ears in place and then you can flip the ears whichever way you need to. I also highly recommend getting an organic finished teether and also using organic yarn for the babies because they'll be putting their mouths on this, it would just be a better option. If you are selling these in a shop, I would be transparent about the yarn that you're using and where you got the wooden teether from. I do think these would be the perfect gifts for Easter or a baby shower present. They're just cute, fun, and really easy to get. If you're looking for more of a decoration, grab your embroidery hoop, place your ears on top of the hoop, go ahead and move one ear from back to front, flip it to the front, and then flip that other ear from back to front and then go ahead and pull up on the ears while also moving that band up. So here, just pull up, kind of giving it a little tug, and then it'll tighten as it moves up. Now this, since it'll be a decoration, you could add some glue, you could even add some flowers, and I'm gonna picture my larger bunny ear wreath up here, so you could always check out that free pattern if you wanted to make one for, um, 
a wall in your house, but these three and a half mini ones are just cute. You can always gift these as well. And you can always add any embellishment that you'd like. So that's it, you guys. Thanks so much for crocheting with me. I hope you liked this tutorial. Please check out my channel and subscribe for new weekly crochet tutorials or Amigurumi crochet alongs. And check out Yarn Society for free patterns. <laughs>